Hello, friends. Welcome in. If you're new here, this is the Pack a Day podcast, and I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Thanks so much for joining me today. It's not going to be the most hardcore episode that I've probably ever done, but we definitely have some things to dive into, including Will Redmond being placed on IR, the Packers making some transactions to get down to that 80 man roster. Jordan Love returns to team activities in practice. And I want to talk a little bit about special teams as well. Everyone's favorite topic, especially in Green Bay after just decades of special teams dominance. But let's start off with Jordan Love returning to practice. I want to get to the transactions after that. But this is definitely a stepping stone in the right direction to Jordan Love being able to play on Saturday. Sounds like he didn't throw a ton, but he did go into team activities, started by handing off the ball a couple times, then actually let it rip. Sounded like he threw a couple of not so great passes, but finished things off with a strike over the middle. I believe it was to Reggie Begleton. So I think the major takeaway here, of course, is that this is setting up hopefully for Jordan Love to be able to play on Saturday in Buffalo. I think that's what everyone's hoping for. I'm sure the Packers, Jordan Love, of course, the fans, everyone, right? We hopefully, I think if you're a Packer fan, right? will not see any Jordan Love, except maybe in in some situations where hopefully the Packers have big leads late in games and he's probably not going to throw in those situations. But if all goes according to plan, this Saturday would be the last opportunity to see Jordan Love in any capacity of the season. Now, we don't know what's going to happen with Rodgers and it's a long season and everything like that. But if in fact that is the case, that Love, this is the last opportunity to see Love this season, With all that's pending with Aaron Rodgers next year, you would love to get at least one more really good look at Jordan this preseason. I know the Packers would like to see that. So hopefully this is trending in the right direction and hopefully he's able to play Saturday for a variety of different reasons. But I think more importantly than anything, he just needs those live reps against a different team on the road. No, it's not a regular season game. Yes, Buffalo is probably going to play a little bit vanilla on defense, especially with it being the last game prior to uh, the regular season starting, but it is still valuable for Jordan to get those reps nonetheless. And here's hoping that he's going to be able to start and play well into that game and get maybe some of those reps that he missed out on by not being able to play in preseason game two. Next up, let's get to some of those transactions. Kamal Martin was officially released. So we talked yesterday how maybe they were leaking this in order to be able to get him uh, traded and maybe a conditional pick or something like that. You kind of got the feeling as Matt LaFleur was talking in the morning, kind of pumping up, saying that this was a difficult decision, that maybe they were you know, trying to inflate his trade value a little bit, but that did not end up being the case. And I think that really tells you, you know, if for anyone that's out there, right? For anyone that's out there that's saying like, oh, Green Bay is making this massive mistake. How could they be giving up on Kamal Martin already? Well, it should be noteworthy that there are teams looking to trade for Kadar Hallman, and not a single team was willing to say, yeah, we'll take a flyer on Kamal Martin for literally anything, literally a conditional seventh round pick three years from now, no team was willing to give that up. So noteworthy, and it's tough to say Green Bay made a mistake. Now, I very much expect a team to put a claim in for him. In fact, I would expect multiple teams to put a claim in for him. I I don't know that you know, based on his contract and things like that, that that's necessarily a guarantee, but I would expect him to get claimed by somebody, uh, but we'll see if that happens. And if so, we'll see where he goes, probably Vikings, Bears, Lions, right? Because that seems to be how these things work out, but uh, we'll see what happens with Kamal Martin. But more importantly, he is no longer officially a Green Bay Packer. Uh, Green Bay also released Josh Avery. So he was kind of next up on that list of releases and a little bit surprising here uh, with Avery getting released, maybe only in the fact that that he was brought in late in the process and he did show some signs of potential. I I thought maybe there would be that potential that he could get into the practice squad discussion. I'm not surprised, obviously, that he's not in that 53-man roster discussion, but I thought they'd keep him around an extra week to get in that rotation uh, this upcoming Saturday against Buffalo and maybe have an opportunity to show himself for a practice squad spot. But I mean, the likelihood there, you know, Jack Heflin is already really pushing for a spot. In fact, I think he's going to make the roster, which already makes this defensive line almost insane to to try to get onto based on where the, you know, kind of the cutoff point would be. So makes sense that they maybe move on from Avery, but I thought he flashed maybe just enough to get in that conversation, but Green Bay decides to move on uh, to get down to 80 players. And then of course, the biggest news of the day was that Will Redmond was placed on IR. And It was an interesting sort of series of events because Matt LaFleur was asked about Will Redmond in his morning press conference. 
and point blank said that Will Redmond's basically been their best special teams player the last couple of years while he's been here. Then he shows up at practice in a walking boot, which is never a good sign and basically means that you're going to be out for at least some period of time. And then it comes out later that he was the one placed on IR. Now, I know I go over this every time, but again, if you're not familiar with the rules, yes, in season, you can bring players back from injured reserve. You cannot bring players back from injured reserve if they are placed on IR prior to that final cutdown date. You have to make the initial 53-man roster, then be placed on IR, and then you can bring a player back. If they're placed on IR at this time, you cannot bring them back. So Will Redmond, his season is done. There are ways that you can release him with an injury settlement. Then once that settlement, let's say it's like a 10-week settlement, and then he has three weeks after that that he can't play for the Packers, and then he could play, you know, they could re-sign him after that point if he was healthy enough to play. The odds of that happening are insanely slim, and in all likelihood, this ends Will Redmond's time as a Green Bay Packer. It's an unfortunate series where even as a former third-round pick, just has injuries throughout his career, was probably set honestly, to be the number six defensive back in this dime defense. Again, your mileage may vary on how you feel about that, but was really setting up for that. I think he was going to make the roster, even with some of these younger safeties performing well in camp. Again, the the key part here is the core special teams. Matt LaFleur even mentioned, again, he can get you out of a game as a corner if you absolutely need him to. So there's good versatility and flexibility there that Green Bay loses out. I think more importantly, Two really core special teams players in Will Redmond and Randy Ramsey, both now out for the season. Those are two of their best special teams players, and those are going to be big losses for this team. So, you know, again, special teams, not always the sexiest topic, not always the most fun thing to discuss, but we've seen how bad Green Bay's been on special teams. The worst thing you can have is losing a couple of your best coverage players. And again, in Will Redmond and Ramsey, Ram, Randy Ramsey, that's exactly what that was. Now, As far as Will Redmond at safety, I think this opens up some really interesting scenarios. Now, Darnell Savage, Adrian Amos, and to me, Henry Black are going, of course, Savage and Amos are going to, but I believe Henry Black has solidified himself a roster spot on this team. He's been the dime safety basically since training camp started, and he's played well in that role. He's played well in preseason. He showed well in special teams. I believe he is going to be not only on this roster, I believe he's going to be the dime safety for this team. So, uh, and as Ben Fennell has noted on multiple occasions in preseason so far, he fits very, very well within this Joe Barry defense. So Henry Black to me has made this team. I believe that's going to leave one, but pro- or you know at least one, but probably two safety spots left for three players. And that's Vernon Scott, that's Ennis Gaines, and that's Christian Uphoff. There's an insane outside chance that they could keep all three, but I don't think that that's super likely. It's possible, but not likely. I think they ultimately keep two of those three, is what my guess would be, between Vernon Scott, Ennis Gaines, and Christian Uphoff. And I think it's going to be a really interesting scenario. And I think special teams is going to play a huge part here. And then also Vernon Scott's injury could play a very big part as well. Is he you know, close to coming back? Is he going to be out a few weeks? Those are all things that could play into this as well. My gut today, if all three are healthy, says that Vernon Scott and Christian Uphoff make the team because Uphoff has shown serious, serious special team skill and they need all of the special team skill they can get at this point. So my gut tells me, it's Savage Amos and then Henry Black, Vernon Scott, and then and then Christian Uphoff. It would not shock me if Gaines got in over Uphoff or over Vernon Scott. Again, Scott's injury could certainly play a part there as well. I like all three guys. I think all three have upside. You guys have heard me talk about Ennis Gaines all offseason. I've said he's been their best undrafted free agent. I think Jack Heflin's actually taken that over. I think Heflin's won and Ennis Gaines is number two. But I like these safeties and I'm really interested to see how this plays out. And I don't think the Will Redmond injury is as concerning because I do think some of these players, especially Christian Uphoff, has great special team skill. Henry Black has taken a step. Vernon Scott and his gains have shown potential. So I think there's still a lot of talent in that safety room. Very, very intrigued to see how this ends up playing out. And I think ultimately, if they do go Vernon Scott and Christian Uphoff, as I mentioned, I think there's a phenomenal chance that they get Ennis Gaines back on the practice squad. I don't think a team is going to claim him. And I think Green Bay may have some conviction in the fact that if they cut Gaines, he doesn't get claimed by another team and they can bring him back. So I think that could be a direction that Green Bay goes there as well. 
I want to wrap things up by going over special teams and some of the woes that we've had, that they've had because I've we've seen them have issues again this preseason. This has been a, you know over a decade long running issues with you know, basically crappy punters since Craig Hendrick left the team. You know Mason Crosby's been the saving grace. The long snapper has been up and down. You know uh, Hunter Bradley has not been good in that role. J.K. Scott just shanked another punt. They've been giving up long returns in preseason. Will Redmond and Randy Ramsey, as we just mentioned, are now out for the season. So there's a lot going on here. I think it's very interesting, at least in my opinion, that of the three specialists, Mason Crosby, Hunter Bradley, J.K. Scott. The only one that has quote unquote competition right now is is uh, Mason Crosby with with JJ Molson. Now that's probably in an effort to save your very old kicker's leg and not have him kick off a ton and you know just have an extra kicker in camp to to kind of limit the amount of reps that Mason Crosby takes in a week and again in a preseason game. But it's again it, it, that that part's not as surprising. But the fact that J.K. Scott and Hunter Bradley don't even have competition in camp right now is very surprising. Now, they still have competition, make no mistake about it. And it would not shock me in any way, shape, or form if Green Bay's long snapper and punter for this season are not on the roster right now. Hunter Bradley has been bad, bad in practice so far. And uh, um, Bill Huber, excuse me, I believe it was him on uh, on Wednesday or on Tuesday, excuse me, said that there were at least three of the six snaps that that he did uh, in field goal kicking periods that were just awful snaps that hit the ground, bounced, whatever. And J.K. Scott saved those. And here's the thing. If they do go in another direction and do go and get another punter and do get another long snapper, you're threatening the one thing that has been working well, Mason Crosby, because now all of a sudden he's got to get the timing down with a new long snapper, a new punter, how he holds, like all of that. There's a different rhythm there. Now, Crosby's a pro's pro, so he should be fine with that. But because they haven't gotten better punters and long snappers already, and now you may have to claim somebody, that that is a concern that you know you could only have a week to kind of prepare to, for Mason Crosby to get ready and learn the cadence. By cadence, I just mean the rhythm. I don't actually mean like the, the cadence at the line of scrimmage, but he has to relearn the rhythm with these new players. So, and even if one of them changes, right? So we'll see what happens there. But that's been, I, th- I think, a serious concern. Now, not everything is awful, right? I do think Highland Hill and Amari Rogers could provide a spark on kick return and punt return this season. And I do think there is a group of players on this team right now. We'll see how many of these players make the team. But I do think there's a group of players on this team right now. Malik Taylor, Dominique Daphne, Josiah Deguara, Tipa Naliai, Oren Burks, Ty Summers, Ray Wilborn, Isaiah McDuffie, Isaac Yadam, KB Nento, Eric Stokes, Henry Black, Innes Gaines, Vernon Scott, Christian Uphoff, Shamar John Charles. I think all those guys. And yes, Eric Stokes as well. We have seen him on special teams. If he's the number four corner, which I think he's going to be, I could see him easily getting special teams reps as well. I do think that group of players has the ability to be a strong special teams group. Now it's just getting them on the same page. How many of that group actually makes the roster? I think it's going to be another piece of that. And you know, can they improve? We haven't seen it in years. They need to be better from a kick coverage standpoint, a punt coverage standpoint, punt protect. We saw punt blocked a season ago. The punter has been inconsistent. The snapping has been inconsistent. It's been Mason Crosby in a comedy of errors for the better half of, what, over a decade? So this is still a major concern. And while Green Bay's offense can overcome a lot of it and their defense can hopefully be improved this season, you would like to see competence from the special teams. I'm not asking for the best special teams group in the league. I'm not asking for a top 10. I'm asking for special teams competence. And you already have a big piece of that covered because Mason Crosby probably going to stay his same consistent self. If that's the case, just get somewhere near competent punting, somewhere near competent coverage, somewhere near competent snapping. And it would be a major improvement from a special teams that just hasn't been good for a very long time now. That's going to do it for me today. Thanks as always for joining me. I'll be right back here tomorrow with an all new episode. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, but until next time, and as always, go Paco.